Just what is a lollipop ring circuit? An often asked question. More correctly known as a hybrid circuit or hybrid socket ring circuit, just what is it? We are asked, just what does lollipop circuit mean? Is it legal in relation to the building regulations and wiring regulations? How do we test a lollipop circuit? And why use this kind of circuit? It's a hybrid circuit where two different types of circuit have been joined together. It's a ring circuit and a radial circuit making just one circuit. Imagine the lollipop shape as it leaves the consumer unit. So hybrid is part ring and part radial. Look at the lollipop on the right. The top half, the sugary lollipop part, is the ring circuit and the stick is the radial circuit part. Why should we want to do this? It could be an inherited circuit that was found during a periodic inspection and test and most often using a pre-existing but now redundant radial circuit. Your job is to show that it is safe for use. Or the customer may want to control a ring circuit by means of an isolator switch remotely some distance away from the consumer unit. And smart technology switching may be required for that whole circuit so that it can be controlled from an app or some other software. Perhaps it's a redundant cooker circuit. So let's make up a story. The customer has had some building work done and the old kitchen at the back of the house has been converted to a conservatory and the kitchen is now relocated with all new circuits. Can the old cooker circuit be used for a socket ring circuit in the new conservatory? The question now is, can we do this? Do the wiring regulations allow this? Do the building regulations permit it? The answer is yes, we can do this as long as we follow certain wiring regulations and common sense rules. We need to apply all that we know about radial circuits and all that we know about ring circuits. In this example, the pre-existing and now redundant cooker circuit is 6mm twin and earth with a 32 amp type B circuit breaker at the consumer unit. A preliminary visual inspection of the cable, the breaker and the consumer unit show that no defects are apparent and it is okay to use this cable. The new part, the new ring circuit, will be installed in the converted conservatory as shown. What does the definitions part of the wiring regulations say? It says, a ring final circuit is defined as a final circuit in the form of a ring and connected to a single point of supply. In our case, that single point of supply is the junction box where the old 6mm cable ends. If we follow certain guidelines, everything will be fine. Let's start by looking at the current carrying capacity of cables in the ring part and in the radial part. The ring part must meet all the requirements for a ring final circuit. And the radial part must also meet the requirements of the regulations, especially regarding current carrying capacity of the conductors. We should all be familiar with the little formula shown here. The fuse or breaker rating IN must be equal to or greater than the design current IB and the current carrying capacity of the cable must be equal to or greater than the rating of the breaker. Considering the radial part first, the size or rating of the fuse or circuit breaker IN must be at least equal to or greater than the design current of the circuit IB as we have just said. For a socket circuit this is often a 30 amp or 32 amp protective device. The live conductors must have a rating IZ of at least 32 amps and environmental conditions must also be taken into consideration. Things like grouping, thermal insulation etc. This drawing of the radial part shows what is happening. In our example, the in-use current is not expected to exceed 32 amps, so we can say that our design current is 32 amps. The circuit breaker rating is therefore chosen as a 32 amp device, and the cable is already installed. This is a 6mm twin and earth with a clipped direct rating of 47 amps, or if it was reference method 100, above a plasterboard ceiling, this will be 34 amps. So the cable 
is not a problem. Now looking at the ring part, a 32 amp circuit breaker has been selected in the radial part. A ring circuit is effectively two parallel conductors that, in theory, will carry half the ring circuit current each. But we do not make a 50-50 decision on conductor size. To choose two conductors to carry 16 amps each is not good practice. Our conductor size choice should be nearer to 67% or two-thirds of the breaker size for each conductor to allow for some uneven loading. This slide shows the ring circuit part. It's custom and practice to install a 32 amp ring circuit using 2.5 mm twin and earth cable. The current carrying capacity of this cable, clipped direct, is 27 amps and 0 0.67 of 32 amps is 22 amps, give or take a little. So our 2.5 mm twin and earth at 27 amps will easily handle the 22 amps that we need. The next thing to consider is accessibility of the joints, the joint box or switch. And this joint box or switch must be accessible for inspection and maintenance throughout the life of the installation, except if the connection type meets the requirements of Regulation 526.3 for maintenance-free connections, etc. Protective conductors must also be carefully considered. The CPC is often the only way that we can ensure that the breaker will operate within the time for safety if things go wrong. For the radial part, it must be correctly sized as a radial CPC. And it must be tested for continuity from the point at which it joins the ring back to the earth bar in the consumer unit. The CPC or earth in the ring part must be a complete ring where both ends are joined at the point of connection to the radial part. Unless it is formed by metallic covering or enclosure etc that complies with the relevant regulations. Now we can look at R1 plus R2 measurements. They are going to be different for the different parts of the circuit but if we follow the guidelines in part 6 of the wiring regulations we will complete this and all the other testing. We test the hybrid circuit as two separate circuits and then add the two results together. So begin by splitting the circuit at the joint box or switch. Begin with the radial part. Link the line and CPC at the consumer unit and test line and CPC at the joint box for low ohms continuity, as we would for any other radial circuit. This is R1 plus R2 for the radial part. If the conductor resistances are measured separately as end-to-end -end resistances, then little r1 is the end-to-end -end resistance of the line and little r2 is the end-to-end -end resistance of the CPC. For a radial circuit, r1 plus r2 is the same as little r1 plus little r2. On this drawing, we can see the line and CPC connected through a Wago, but any adequate connection type would do. A terminal strip, crocodile clips, etc. Then we can test for low ohms continuity back to the consumer unit from the joint box. We test the ring part as we would test any other ring circuit. And we will test at the joint box or switch just as we would at the consumer unit. Cross connect the opposite line and CPC conductors and low ohms test at each socket on the ring for balanced readings. The highest reading obtained is R1 plus R2 for the ring circuit. If the resistances are measured as end-to-end -end resistances, then little r1 is the line resistance and little r2 is the CPC resistance. And to find big r1 plus big r2 for a ring circuit, we add together little r1 and little r2 and divide by 4. And this drawing shows this. Cross-connect line A to CPC B and then line B to CPC A. I use a plugged up tester or adapter that allows me to test each socket without having to dismantle the sockets. We will now have two measurements. Now add R1 plus R2 for the radial part to R1 plus R2 for the ring part. This is R1 plus R2 total. And R1 plus R2 total plus ZE will give us ZS. Insulation resistance is carried out as per any other socket circuit. We will test the whole thing, 
the whole circuit for insulation resistance. Reinstate all the connections at the joint box so that the radial part and the ring part are joined together. At the consumer unit, replace the CPC into the earth bar. Now carry out the standard insulation resistance tests on the hybrid circuit as one circuit. Where a hybrid ring radial circuit is inherited, found during an inspection and test, special attention should be paid as to how this circuit has been installed. The circuit breaker or fuse size should be used to determine if the cables in the circuit are correctly sized for current carrying capacity. For the radial part, they should be rated to at least 100% of the circuit breaker or fuse rating. For the ring part, this should be at least 67% of the breaker or fuse rating. Take into account environmental factors, grouping, rewirable fuses, thermal insulation, etc. Where a decision has been made to install a new hybrid ring radial circuit, or where it is intended to convert a redundant radial circuit into a hybrid circuit, all the factors previously mentioned must be considered before commencing the installation. This will be part of the design process. Always leave the appropriate labelling at the consumer unit so that any electrician that attends the installation in the future is aware of the hybrid circuit. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. And we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos. And remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.